YouTubers and weavers, mostly weaver eggs, I guess. At the end of the video where I did the show and tell on the blue towels, mostly blue, but they're, it, the video is labeled blue towels, I mentioned that as I was doing the um, Jane Stafford online course, I paid some attention to the summer and winter session and that I've taken her idea of summer and winter and some of her techniques but I don't want to make placemats as she did and I don't have the same colors as she did in my stash of threads. So what I've decided to do is to make hot pads instead and where Jane used 8-2 cotton for her warp and tabby weft. I believe she used 8-4 cotton for her pattern weft. Well, she also made hers, I think she made it 17 or 18 inches wide in the reed. Um, that's too wide for a, a hot pad. So I am going to use 8-4 cotton, all white, for my warp, 8-4 cotton for my tabby weft, sometimes white, sometimes other colors. And I am using um, this stuff. This one's called Sugar and Cream. Um, I think there's also a Peaches and Cream or sugar and spice or something like that. Um, there are two, two different brands of cotton thread. The real thick stuff that you can get at uh, Joanne Fabrics and at Walmart for doing craftsy stuff like um, crocheting hot pads and stuff. But I'm going to use it for weaving. So that's the background of that. Now Jane also did some samples in her, she made a, I think an 11 yard warp, so she had enough to play with for samples. I didn't want to spend that much warp to doing samples. So I made a six inch wide warp with 8-4 cotton, no, with 8-2 cotton, cotton lid actually. And I did a small sample, and I'll kind of hold it up like this. Again, I'm playing with color and um, the texture of the weave. Let's see if I can get in closer and just show a few of these. So there is uh, some alternating. I don't remember what that is. I think that's a whole bunch of um, her A style in uh, just repeating in the X format. Here's an A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A using the X format. Here's the same thing again using a red weft. Again, this is all 8 by um, 2 by 8. Here I'm alternating A, B, A, B, A, B four times. This is, I don't even remember what it is, but you can see I'm playing with the pattern. I think this is a whole bunch of A's in O fashion and B's in O fashion. This is a mistake. That's why I drew the red line in there. It starts to become something special up here. Now I'm doing it in the O pattern and not the X pattern of the weave. Some more of the O's alternating A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, A. Alternating A, B, A, B, A, B using o, o threading instead of X threading. And if you don't know what those are, I suggest you sign up for Jane's class and take it or read a book on summer and winter because I'm not going to pretend to steal her thunder and explain everything about summer and winter. Here's some Duca Gang. 
I hope I pronounced that right. It's a Swedish word. More Duka Gang. More old fashioned using a different color. Here I've switched and my weft is um, boucle, so it's got a more of a finish to it. And here I used uh, two colors of boucle. I used, see in this one I think I used a, a, a the, the tabby weft was the same as the ground, was a, a, the natural. But here I went to the light blue as my tabby, light blue bouquet as my tabby weft and green boucle as my pattern weft. And then I tried some um, reddish purple straight linen just to see what that would do. So there's my sample. It got me enough that I could see what I was doing. Anyways, enough rambling on. Let's take a look at the weaving. This straight tabby part will be the hem. I'm going to fold it over on the back and sew it in as a hem on the back of each of these um, hot pads. So, and for those of you who do understand the A and B blocks of summer and winter. I'm going to be starting out with a B block, so, and something Jane did that I did not understand and am not doing is when she did a B, a B block, she always started with a B tabby. When she did an A block, she always started with an A tabby. But then if you put an A and a B right next to each other, it seems to me you're going to have two weft tabbies together. And for the life of me, I can't understand the logic of that. Um, she tried to explain it, and I just couldn't wrap my brain around it. So we're going to start with an, a tabby A, and we'll put in. Now we're going to do a B block first. So we'll pull this across and tuck the tail in. I'll cut that tail off in a minute. Tabby. Pattern. Tabby. Pattern. Tabby pattern. That's a, that's a B block. Now we're going to do an A block. Tabby pattern. Tabby pattern. Tabby pattern. Be tabby. Pattern. We've gone far enough I can safely cut off this little Irish pennant and toss it over in the wastebasket. Start another tabby. I'm doing a B block again. Almost hit the wrong treadle there.
switching back to the A pattern again, A block if you will. And then we'll go to the tabby again. So, if you look here, this was the B block and it's got the pattern showing more right in the center. Then the A block, the pattern weft is more on the back of the fabric. Then another B block where the pattern weft is on the front or the top. And here's an A block where it's on the back. So that's when I've been saying A and B, you can see that there's two blocks here. And, you know, so this is, again, and this is based on both the treadling and the threading. So I've forgotten what block I have here. I think it's a B block threaded down the middle and an A block threaded here so that the pattern will be on the surface. But it gives me a pretty neat looking um, contrasty pattern. And it's what I'm going to keep doing for a while, but I'm not going to leave the camera on and let this run on forever. I will go a little bit further and show you some more in a little bit. Well, gang, there's one more of the um, hot pads that's been completed uh, on the loom. But what I want to do for just a minute, for those of you that are familiar with Jane Stafford's courses. Um, the PDF document that she sent with season six, episode eight, which is what I'm following for this, lists what she calls the mother of all tie ups for summer and winter. And I think you know I've always numbered my treadles, and you can see them there, especially if you look at the, the blue numbers. But for the purpose of this project, I took her treadling arrangement and wrote it, and I've set up based on it. And if you look what I've got for the um, red letters that I've put on my treadles, you can see the A and B, um, because they're in lowercase and they're farthest off to the side, that reminds me that that is the tabby part of everything I'm doing then G, A, and B is what she calls the ground. A1 and A2 are um, one of her two treadlings, just they are. Again, B1 and B2 are related, and A, B, 1 and 2. Okay, gang, I am starting another of the hot pads. I've decided to switch the colors around a little bit. You can see in this one that I just finished that I had a white tabby weft and a red pattern weft. Obviously I've got a white uh, warp. This time now I'm, this is, these parts here and here will be the part that I fold over and make a hem. And I'll sew that on later. But what I'm going to do this time is switch the colors around and do a red tabby weft and a white pattern weft. So I'll get that set up and I'm going to do the exact same pattern as I did down on this one but everything in reversed colors. So let's set that aside just a second. So our first, this is going to be an A1, and I'm going to tuck the tail in for the pattern, just 
so that we're out of the way. That's a little bit extra, but. Okay, so now we'll go tabby. I got a little bit more thread here than I need, but. Pattern. Tabby. Pattern. And another tabby. pattern. So there's the first four of each and that comprises one set. So let's cut off the Irish pennants, reach over and throw those down in the garbage can. And I'm just going to keep weaving and let you keep watching. So. Now we're doing um, the B set. So that means that the pattern will show up in the middle and not on the sides here. See the whites in the in the middle, not over here on the side. Now we're back to an A. Oh, I did the wrong. So we'll unweave this one. And unweave this one. I did the wrong pattern weft that time. Had my foot on the wrong treadle. Put my foot over onto the correct treadle and reweave that one. I did two of them wrong. I'm going to unweave again. If you see a mistake and it's only one or two rows back, I prefer to fix it. If I see the mistake, you know, way back here, sorry, it's too late. I can't fix it, so we'll do this one. This is the correct one now. I see what I'm doing. Yeah, 
I have to lean back every once in a while and look down at the treadles to see exactly which one I've got my foot on because the feel is very similar between the one and two treadles of each pattern shaft. So. Okay, now we're going to do three of that was A, B, A, B, A, B, so now we're going to do three A's. And I'm running out of room to work here, so I'm going to advance the warp a little bit. Well, there you've seen me weave, what, two or three inches? Something like that. So I'm going to keep weaving off camera, but you get the idea of how this um, is going. You can see it's a little bit slower when you have to switch between your shuttles each time. And even though I've got the pat the pattern memorized, well, it took me the first two or three um, hot pads to do it, I still have to, to think carefully about what I'm doing because there is a bit of complexity in this and I know what I should be doing but I can easily make mistakes so I have to go a little bit slow and think about this. Anyways, a little bit more in a little while. Bye bye for now.